As the host of Why China, I kept wondering, who are these people driving this innovative trend? Whoa, nice, that's useful. I'm gonna lose my job. Access to technology is access to information. Well, today, we are going to look at innovative talents in China. Let's do this. The World Intellectual Property Organization released the Global Innovation Index 2019, and China ranks number 14, three places up compared to the year before. For indices such as patents and trademarks by origin, China comes first. Apart from being ranked among the top in innovation, ever more Chinese scientists are making history as recipients of international awards. It's precisely the efforts of generations of scientific researchers have driven Chinese scientific and technological innovation to the global forefront. China has, in recent years, placed great emphasis on the cultivation of innovation talents, which boosted the building of a science and technology power. Talent is the prime resource, innovation is the prime power. Endless talent resources are China's major underlying strengths and late mover advantage in the fierce international competition. Emphasize education is actually emphasize innovation. China now has the largest brain circulation in the world. China has about uh, 60,000 students go to different countries in last year and have over half a million people coming back. Now every year we have about 8.5 million college graduates. China is the largest PhD student produced country in the world. I think that China's you know, educational system is very, very strong up mm -hmm. through university, but at that don't yet have the techniques, methodologies that American or European universities have. How we can raise up the post graduate research work in China's own universities and the postdoctoral work, then it's going to be a breakthrough and they'll be able to have more applied research here. Okay, I'm about to enter into a space where innovation happens, a place where they harbor true innovative talents. Let's check it out. Well, this is a little anticlimactic. It's just an unassuming lab. I mean, is there any talent here? Um, what we are trying to do here is trying to develop a new computing technology using emerging memory. And the goal is actually to put a, one of those chips inside your smartphone to recognize your, your speech or your hand reading. Okay, so Professor, what do you think is the most important factor in the development of new innovative technologies? I think besides the, lo the long-term investment, the key is actually people, especially skilled uh, talents, to support the continuous innovation. In the past uh, four years, we have actually spin off uh, five startup companies, and the ultimate goal is actually to develop five to ten uh, chips in the future. That's a lot of brain power right there. Yeah. That's where innovation comes from. China's tertiary education has fostered fresh forces for innovation. Among its ever-growing annual manpower, over 45% have received tertiary education. Major projects such as FAST, quantum science, and lunar exploration program are closely connected to the scientific research results of China's tertiary institutes. The Global Innovation Index 2019 shows the quality of China's tertiary institutes has gone from the fifth place in 2018 to the third this year. In terms of knowledge and technology output, China ranks number five in the world. 91 million science and technology workers and over 170 million talents who have received tertiary education or possess professional skills are giving fresh impetus to China's innovation. But this are far from satisfying China's demand for high-end talents. China has spent you know, the past four decades shifting from an engineering base to a professional base, now into a technology base. And it's really now on the technology level that that applied research is going to need to be you know, further developed. 
And I think that's going to be the biggest challenge for China's educational institutions. I think that uh, China uh, currently also uh, still lacking extremely high level talent. China already has very impressive hardware infrastructure, but where's the soft power, you know, where's the soft talent? Out of 1.4 billion people, uh, we have only about uh, 170 million people can be classified as some kind of talent or highly skilled or semi-skilled. China gradually issued many uh, provincial policies. For example, China has a Changjiang Scholar Program, and after new century, China has uh, high-level talent programs, and, uh, and particularly China has set up this uh, over 360 returnee parks, specially designed to attract a foreign students who study in foreign countries, who come back to do the innovation, to do startups, and then that's really effective. Complementing China's talent innovation is its adoption of the intellectual property rights protection. China started late with the establishment of intellectual property rights, which only began in the 80s. Major inventions such as artemisinin received no intellectual property rights protection, scientific research units and scientists didn't receive due respect, and China lost highly profitable opportunities. In 2008, China introduced the National Intellectual Property Rights Strategy. According to the white paper released in 2019, China's position on the China-U.S. economic and trade consultations, between 2011 and 2018, China's invention patent applications topped the world for eight consecutive years. The ever-improving intellectual property rights stimulates talent innovation and creativity which encourages innovation results being applied to the market and raises China's innovation quality. I remember in the 1980s when I was a young lawyer and our law firm was translating from Chinese to English, the first things we were doing are China's first trademark law. It was very new and it took another 10, 20 years to implement that intellectual property protection. In the March of uh, this year, China passed the Foreign Investment Protection Law. It actually stipulates that uh, IPR should be protected. If it violates, it should be severely punished. And all foreign companies should be treated equal in China. You have the need for protection of private intellectual property. Of course, you have a continual competitive environment, which only leads to more innovation. It's in China's interest to protect intellectual property and to prevent copycat. The Global Innovation Index 2019 shows, in the pharmaceutical industry, China's patent number tops the world. A country's research and development standard in innovative medicine reflects its general strength in life science. As the main driving force of innovation, Chinese businesses contributed tremendously to improve the ranking. In 2017, among China's research and development budget, 190 billion U.S. dollars comes from business capital, occupying 76 percent of the entire public research and development budget. Building upon 181,000 high new technology companies and 130,000 small and medium-sized technology enterprises, a group of internationally competitive key businesses and multinationals is created. From to innovate to innovating, innovation has become Chinese business's core competency for development and expansion. A scientific discovery is a great achievement, but it takes an innovative talent to apply the scientific discovery to change the world. So Anthony, tell me, where are you from? I'm from the UK originally. Why have you decided to come here and uh, work for a Chinese company? China's growth was just so huge, it was so visible. You could see kind of all the progress that the country was making, especially when it was coming to major industries like tech, globalization in, in Chinese companies. Also, I think, you know, there's such a huge wave now. They offer a really good and challenging environment for people to kind of grow. It's not too much of a hard decision to, to come and work here. I think. I think this kind of product doesn't really have any boundaries. Our recent collaboration with NASA, sending thin film technology up into the International Space Station, I think that's uh, you know, been a really good example of how our globalization as a company has, uh, has benefited another global company. Cool, yeah. And the collaboration like that, that's just going to further promote more innovation, right? Yeah. 
I think one thing China does need a lot of improvement is actually the global talent composition in China. China has a, a relatively very small percentage of global talent. If you want to have the top level in the world, you really have to have the top talents from all over the world. There needs to be maybe changes in the procedures as well as incentives yeah. for bringing more foreign talent to China. But a foreigner goes to America and works for seven years, they're entitled to apply for American citizenship. Absolutely. Yeah. And then they are committed for their life sure. to working sure. for that country and that society. If it was more open in this respect, I think there would be more foreign talent that would be committed to be here for the long term. Now China has set up a national immigration administration and uh, like last year, uh, in two months they approved 1,800 green cards. We should have an international global talent alliance, a global talent uh, organization alliance, so that we can really have access to the global talent. I think Chinese high level talent will be flourish, will be you know, multiplied. Now, with the millennial generation, we're into a high tech era. And so now you have a greater need for technology, innovation. This requires a whole new set of talent. That is the nation's most important asset. In 2019, the Chinese government proposed the active launch of innovation talent exchange projects. And over the next five years, 5,000 foreign and domestic talents will be engaged in exchanges, training, and collaborative research. In recent years, China has extensively intensified collaboration in international science and technology innovation, actively explored and exploited international innovation resources to draw foreign talents, particularly high-end talents. Relying on the best brain's knowledge and wisdom, China's innovation capacity still has great room for improvement as it contributes further to human civilization's advancement. The Industrial Revolution was led by the West, but times have changed. China is influencing the world with its talents, collaboration with innovative talents, globally. So, if you have a good idea, why don't you come over here and join us here in China's innovation revolution.